Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Nanam Paramam Dheyam. Knowledge is supreme. So now I am going to recall modules of finite length. This is just a uh, review. Uh, I will not prove the statements, but uh, they will make the statements so clear that you can prove on your own. Okay. So, uh, uh, R is our ring, uh, let me call A as a ring, A is our base ring, always commutative and M is an A module. You have studied uh, uh, Noetherian modules and also Artinian modules I suppose, right. So, anyway let me recall, so what do you do? So, for the modules, uh, for a fixed module M, I consider all sub modules of that, that is S, I will denote S A M, this is the sub modules and N is a sub module, A sub module. And this set, this is a set and there is inclusion on this set, S A M with this inclusion, this becomes an ordered set, ordered set means a set with a relation and the relation should satisfy three property that is reflexive, anti-symmetric and transitive. Such a set is called an ordered set. Uh, many books will, you will find that uh, such are called partial ordered set, but partial word is unnecessary there. So, I, I dropped it and uh, more you go to older books, you will not find the word partial. I do not know why it came from. So, ordered set for us is a, a set with an order on that, okay. Now, in an ordered set, ascending, descending, the chains make sense. So, a module is called Noetherian if every ascending chain becomes stationary, right. And now, when do you call a module to be a artinian? When a descending chain is stationary, right. But now you see, uh, to each ordered set, there is a concept of dual. Dual is the opposite order. So, whatever theorem you want to prove for Noetherian, if I if I change this set to the dual set, that statement will prove. So, the Noetherian will become Artinian and Artinian will become Noetherian. So, you only really have to prove only one theorem. So, if you prove a theorem for Noetherian, then the same theorem will be true for Artinian by just proving, by just changing this set, changing the order to be the opposite order. So, for example, if you want to show that if you have a short exact sequence, so 0, n, m, n prime, if this is short exact and if the middle module is Noetherian, then the other two modules are Noetherian. This, so, same statement, if m is Artinian, then these two, if and only these two are Artinian, how will you prove? You just change the order and, and, and this is really neat, okay. So, now it may happen that you would have seen examples of modules which are Noetherian but not Artinian and Artinian but not Noetherian. So, if it is both, those those modules are 
those modules have nice property. So, whatever so module m with the property with ACC as well as DCC. So, Noetherian and Artelian, these modules are worth uh, noting. So, what does that mean? That means um, this means we have we have when we have such a module, then we have a finite sequence m which is m0 contains m1 contains and this cannot go on forever m k and then it becomes 0 and each stage not equal. And also uh, this containment was not equal, but I want to also assume that there is nobody in between because if somebody is in between I will insert it. So, that means I will make the chain more and more finer. So, with there exist there exist a chain such that the successive quotients m i by m i plus 1 are simple modules, simple a modules for all i. Simple you know, simple means there is no sub module other than uh, 0 and the whole module. So, such a series is called a Jordan order series. Such a such a chain is called a Jordan holder. series for m. Some people also call it a composition series. Okay, now um, if you have such if you have two such chains uh, two such chains two such Jordan order uh, series, then uh, this theorem that they have the same length any two Jordan holder series for M have R equivalent, let me write it R equivalent, R equivalent. So, what does equivalent means? So, that is if I have two chains like this m equal to m0 contained in ml mk which is 0 and the other one is n equal to n0. N L, this is zero, and here the successive quotients are M I by M I plus one are simple. Here N J by N J plus one simple, and we call them equivalent if K equal to L. And there exist these guys are permutations of this. That is, there exists a permutation sigma on k letters, which is L letters. So, S S K, these are the permutations on k symbols such that M i by M i plus 1, this is isomorphic to N sigma j by sigma j plus 1 or sigma i sigma i plus 1 
so up to permutation the successive quotients are same isomorphic such a uh, two two such uh, series are called equivalent so jordan holder theorem says that any two jordan holder series for a module are equivalent so in particular they have the same length and this is called the length of a module so i will not prove this theorem so prove this proof either do it yourself or see some standard book uh, see maybe atm mcdonald okay like so that is called the length of a module so i will write that symbol by length l just to remember which ring we are working on and this is the length of m this is called the length of these are called modules of finite length because length should make sense and to make to to in order that it makes sense we have to assume the modules are of both the should satisfy dcc and acc so in particular when you are your base ring is a field suppose your base ring is a field then when will a module m module m means now k vector space when will it when will it be when will it satisfy acc and when will it satisfy dcc when it is both finite dimension so length of a by m in that case this is nothing but the dimension of that module dimension of the vector space m so this makes sense when it is a finite dimensional vector space so now um, now going back to our uh, assumption on r not see r was a graded ring and as a graded as an algebra over r not it is generated by finitely many elements the this one came because r is not ethereal that was our assumption original so this forces that r not should be not ethereal but i want to assume in in uh, even in more ke, uh, the more, uh, we have in, in a above exposition we have assume r not is actually a field but i could have also assume that r not is actually finite k algebra remember finite means finitely generated as a module that means as a vector space it is finite dimensional and in that case the dimension see we have in a poincare series we have this dimension over k of this modules mm so now these mm's are finitely generated modules over r not and if i assume r not is actually finite dimensional vector space then this dimension i will have to replace by the length over r not this will make sense because this is a finitely generated module and this r not is a artinian ring and therefore it is artinian and this length will make sense because it will have it's no ethereal and also artinian therefore it will this length will make sense and in the above theorem everywhere only a definition will have to replace dimension by this length and all other induction etc everything will go through in the calculation you have a graded module no the graded module we started with so we had a graded ring and a graded module over that and we are assuming r is no ethereal m is no ethereal and and then we defined pm and in the definition of pm this was the coefficient of z power m so in the general case now you will have to replace this dimension by the length because uh, 
the if you see the proof of that it will depend on on the uh, on the uh, the jordan holder series so every, every time successive question so so that is just make that change and check whether the same proof will go through if you make a change uh, di replace dimension by this length okay so yes r not is a field but i am saying now you can even assume now r not is a finite k algebra that r not is a field but we have used for a definition no because i have used the word dimension there we have that's what i said for a definition of a poincare series we have the way i have written we have used that it, they are finite dimensional k vector spaces right so r not was our k otherwise poincare series m what we have to define it as summation um the uh, summation running over m now length of r not over of m mm and then z power m no see earlier when r not was a field here i had it was a dimension now i am saying you take this as a new definition and this definition so what we did there was the properties of the dimension and here also you will have to use the properties of the length and what properties when we have a exact sequence short exact sequence length of a middle module is length of the the sum from the other two modules and if you have a long sequence then the length and if you take alternating signs then it should be zero the same same proof will be the same okay so i will not go into that details uh, okay so so first of all uh, if you if you assume r is standard graded that means r now i will use r not r is a r not algebra generated by x1 to xn on all x i is all x1 to xn they are actually degree 1 element r1 that is that is why the standard word okay so sometimes it is also written that this r is as a r not algebra generated by r1 and r1 is finitely generated r not module therefore it is you can choose finitely many elements okay so in this case with the poincare series for any graded module m pm then looks like some laurent polynomial q and all now will be 1 minus z power power n right because this will be 1 minus z power gamma 1 gamma 1 is 1 and so on so there are n of them so now but uh, there may be now see this q is a laurent polynomial maybe this 1 minus z may be factor of this and so on and so on so i want to reduce right in the middle so first of all i want to define a new function this is pm this is p1m p1m you will see why why i want to do this this is just pm one factor i want to add more 1 minus z this is same as q by 1 minus z power n plus 1 and this will be which is power series zm this is a power series right think of it as a power series and this is also power series 
this is the power series 1 plus remember this formula 1 minus 1 over 1 minus z is 1 plus z plus z square and so on. So, the coefficients here they are I will denote them by h 1 m at m and what is h 1 m at m? See here what was it originally? It was only the length or dimension and here now it will get added up because when I multiply by this power series this one over this when I multiply by this power series they will get added up. So, this h 1 m will be equal to dim k m i and i will be up to m ok. Now, I am still writing dimension over k that is because I am we are assuming this r naught r naught is actually finite k algebra. If r naught is a finite k algebra if the dimension what is the relation between the dimension and the length then length over r naught will be length over r naught of a module will be this dimension length over r naught. So, uh, if you take now uh, 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 first length of r naught length of r naught over r naught this is just a dimension of r naught. All right. So, now with this simplification now what do I do? Uh, now uh, this I, we have seen this p m is a rational function of a particular type and this is further rational function. Now, now I want to use a partial fractions uh, I want to use partial fraction. So, partial fraction you remember what is partial fraction? partial fraction decomposition of a rational function. See I will just recall I will just remind you that we have done this many times. For example, let me give you simple example. Uh, you remember when you wanted to solve integration of rational functions. So, you wanted to solve integration of uh, f t by g t this what did you do? You, you, you wrote the denominator polynomial you make split and then and then so simple. So, then in a quadratic case you did this no x uh, this t minus a t minus b and 1 over this first you divide this polynomial f by g and then assume that the degree is smaller degree of the denominator is smaller than the degree of g and then look at this this you wanted to write somebody here somebody here t minus b right and you compute you made a computation and you see so, so if it was a power here if it was power here then you wanted to do this and also you wanted to add square term and so on right. So, this was this was and why why did you do that because the integration of these individuals became easier. But very important assumption what you have made is the denominator polynomial in that rational function splits into linear factors right which is not true for for example, real polynomials. But real polynomials it is not too bad because they are either a linear factor or a quadratic factor. But rational polynomials or polynomials or other fields and that is actually that is why D. L. Umbert stated the fundamental theorem of algebra. 
he wanted to prove fundamental theorem of algebra precisely for this reason not because of any algebraic reason he wanted to compute integration and therefore he was looking for such a partial fraction decomposition so that integration calculation becomes easier therefore he stated that time uh, fundamental theorem of algebra and he was only using or reals but if you prove for complex numbers for reals also it is it follows fundamental fundamental theorem for algebra for reals is every polynomial with real coefficients splits into linear and quadratic factors okay so that was so this is what I, uh, we are going to imitate for this rational function pm so what will happen then so we have this p1m and we have written it like uh, q by 1 minus z power n plus 1 and remember this n is the number of algebra generators for r and this is also we have written it as a series h1 m at m z power m. All right. In this, I know now the first. So the first is I am going to divide the Q by this, and then write this as some polynomial P by the remaining one. The 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 remainder divided by this the denominator. But in that, I am also going to use. So this P is what P is the unique polynomial, Laurent polynomial. Which I got after dividing by this, right? And then some more terms will come. Those terms, in those terms, I want to use this formula. This is the decomposition of this partial fraction. So, one by one minus z power in general nu plus one. What is the formula for this? This is the sum over m. m choose nu nu z power m this is more general than uh, 1 minus z no so this is this formula i am going to plug it in here and then rewrite this term so what will i get and i want to compare and after that i will compare the coefficients of z power m because then i'll get a power series when i write this formula and then i have this power series then i'll compare the coefficients so what will be the coefficients okay so the coefficients will be they will look like this h1m this one is like this this one is also like this h1m at m this will look like when i use this formula and then compare so some integers and then this coefficient m plus nu nu and this sum will run from nu equal to 0 to somebody because you see it's a it's a power series this way what did i do on the left side i first divided by this z 1 minus z power n plus 1 to this laurent polynomial and got this laurent polynomial so the no 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 1 minus z power that divides and then i use i use or directly if you want q is a laurent polynomial and take this uh, 1 minus z power n plus 1 and then use this formula and then compare the coefficient of z power m on both sides so here this binomial coefficients will come and they will come with when i made a uh, division so this d is a unique integer unique integer um and this e 0 to ed they are they are uh, integers and ed is non zero uh coefficients of yes they, they all depend on 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 q and also uh, 
the whether one man is z divides or you know the okay but this also this formula holds only for large for large m you see because this q has negative terms no so when you compare I, I want to compare only for the large power so that the negative coefficients are not playing any role and you see this this uh, the left side is a is a length or dimension so it is which is a non negative integer so from this formula it it is clear that this h h1 m we will see an example for calculation h1 m this is actually asymptotically equivalent to ed and this this when you expand the binomial it is m power d by d factorial asymptotic asymptotic means for large see because when the m is smaller then the, the when the in this binomial expansion the terms will not contribute to the large one so they will be smaller and smaller no so this so this in particular implies that this ed is positive because this side is the sign is determined by by the leading term so that is this ed is positive now this d this integer d which i got out of this that i will prove it is the dimension so that will give us a nice theorem that how do you compute the dimension okay so that is so let me write this formally as a corollary so that what corollary we have proved is the following so r is standard graded r not x1 to xn the degree of x i is 1 and m finite graded r module then there exist unique integer d actually natural number d which is dm it depends on m so natural number and integers e1 to ed in z with ed positive this is if d is positive such that h m at m which is the dimension over k of m m this is equal to summation from nu equal to 1 to d e nu m plus nu minus 1 c nu minus 1 for large m now here the only difference i made is uh, here you remember we have computed h1 h1 is sum of the dimensions from h1 if you want to compute the dimension you just take take the uh, the derivative it's called derivative so that means you take h1 m plus 1 minus hm and you will get see how are you going to get how are you going to get remember this h1 m at m this is the dimensions i less equal to m so if i take m plus 1 and subtract h1 m from that i will get this h1 so we get we have this formula h1 m m plus 1 minus h1 m m this is h m at m Uh, 
m or m plus 1. So, it is good m here and m minus 1 here. So, here you see it is it is the top degree term will get cancelled that is why no that is why it is here the new minus 1 see you have to also use the binomial coefficients formula. So, it is this ok. So, this polynomial this H m this is a polynomial. So, also so the polynomial the polynomial H m m this is a polynomial in m you see it is visible here because it is here it is this formula. So, it is a polynomial in m of degree d this one is a polynomial this polynomial is called the Hilbert Samuel polynomial. of m. Now, let us see one example at least. So, we will we will get accustomed to the calculation. So, example let us take k is a field and let us take our uh, ring graded ring to be the standard graded ring which I will denote x not one variable, but many variables x 1 to x n. And let us take module also that m is also the same. So, m is a graded module and it is standard r is standard graded k algebra. In this case r naught is k. Okay, so, uh, what is p of k x that is what we want to compute right. What is the definition of p of k x? So, this is a series. So, this series is what? So, what are the coefficients of z power m? The coefficients here are precisely what dimension of over k of m m. This is running over m. So, you need to compute what is dimension of m m. So, what is m m? m m is homogeneous components of degree m and what is that? What is the coefficient? What is this? This is a binomial coefficient right. This is m plus n minus 1 choose n minus 1. You see you can test it take one variable. So, what is uh, one variable case? So, n is 1 then it should be what m 1 1 only right. So, it is m plus 0 choose 0 which is 1 always. So, it is actually the series 1 plus z plus z squares and so on. So, which is also uh, so this one is and what is this then this one is nothing but 1 by 1 minus z power n this we have proved it this is the Poincare the the Laurent polynomial is 1 in this case. So, it is this. So, what is d in this case d is n and which is of course, this n is nothing but the cool dimension of our ring. 
this we have proved it in the last lecture we have proved if you take a polynomial ring over a field then the crude dimension is n okay and what is e n what is now it has coefficients up to e n so e n is e n is 1 and all other coefficients are zero for all i less than n in the in the corollary which we have stated because it's only the this this only this and so the remaining coefficients are or zero so this is what and now you could also compute an example where you take a polynomial ring and choose one homogeneous polynomial of some degree and go mod that and calculate you take f homogeneous polynomial of degree d of degree of degree degree not i don't want to call it d, degree r and take r to be equal to polynomial ring in n variables modulo f ideal generated by f this is your graded and now do the do calculate p r first and how will you calculate p r p r you know you to calculate p r you calculate you know the for the p of the polynomial ring and this f degree r so use that uh, multiplication by f and that kind of argument and then you will calculate then the rest is the numerical calculation with the polynomials Oh, oh, oh.